Good morning, Goggle Froggers. It's a wonderful Monday morning. The weather is cooling down and I'm really happy. But I do know that certain people would prefer it really hot. But never mind, it's Monday. It's 10 o'clock. It's Goggle Frogs. And I hope you've got your knitting or crochet. And I hope you've got a cup of something nice. So I've got some really hot tea. So I won't be able to drink it for ages. Um, so, and uh, we will be here for the next hour. And this is the wonderful Robert. How are you doing, Robert? I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, good. And have you been doing much knitting or crochet over the weekend? Um, I did some crochet last night while we watched a film. Oh, really? I managed to do a round and two sides of my blanket, which for those of you that have seen the size of the blanket will know that that's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm starting to wonder now what I'm going to do when it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, because with this one, the motivation was just get to the end of the line and, and stop. But because this is a square that's going out and out and out, I don't quite know how I should time myself when I pick it up to do it. <laughs> Maybe so, you actually need um, to measure it in grams. Because at the I beginning... I so many grams each time. Yeah, because at mm. the beginning of a project, it's really easy to say rows and, you know, so it doesn't matter what it is, but the rows get longer and longer, don't they, when you're doing big projects. So maybe it is having one of those little um, w uh, measuring things nearby so you can say, do you know what, I've done five grams. Because five mm. grams is a lot, isn't it, in in knitting or crochet. So decide what, what feels appropriate and that'd be nice. Because a, a round is impossible. <laughs> yeah. Because that's huge. So we hope you're having a wonderful morning. As per normal in my house, I fed Splodge, I fed my mum, and then I fed myself. Um, so <laughs> I was guessing that order. Um, so, and I hope you've all fed yourself, had something for breakfast, um, had something nice, and um, are all ready to sit back kick your shoes off well i constantly have bare feet even outside half the time they'll see me in bare feet um and just to do a little bit of knitting so i'm on what i term the home home straight with this project so i'm now just doing knit rows seven knit rows then you do the holes then you do one or two rows, and then it's the Pico cast off. So anyway, we're, we're towards the end of this now. And then I can get another project on the needles. So um, we are here for the next ooh, 55 minutes or something like that. And there's a chat box. So please say what you've been doing in the chat box. Say where you are if you're away from home or on your travels or you know, just if you've got some beautiful wool on your needles, tell us what you're knitting with. It'd be lovely. And we will read it out because people who get the replay and watch us on replay will not see the chat box. And people on YouTube won't see the chat box either. So, um, yeah, we'll read that out. And uh, some of it's really amusing. So keep those amusing comments coming. Uh, and that's about it. Oh, and we'll be going through Facebook in a little while to see what's gone into the Facebook group. And I don't know if anything's gone in there because I have not really been on social media at all. So, um, yeah. It's so, quite, there's been some um, interesting posts over the weekend. Has there? Mm. So, you all right? There is a massive farm vehicle going past, and I'm just wondering if my car being parked on the road is is causing concern for huge farm vehicles. <laughs> so I might have to run out and move it. Oh, well. Uh, I'm sure they'll come and knock. Um, right. Should we say some good mornings? Yeah. Uh, and we start with the lovely Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Morning. Uh, we have Safi. Hi, Safi. We have Marion W. Hi, Marion. Morning. We have Louise. Hi, Louise. Morning. We have Judy. Hi, Judy. Morning. We have Janice. Hi, Janice. Morning. We have Graham. Hi, Graham. Hello, Graham. How are you? Uh, we have Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Morning, Deborah. We have Brigitte. Hi, Brigitte. Morning. And we have Amber. Good morning, Amber. Morning. Um, and 
chat wise uh brigitte says morning peeps 276 you, you wow said, i know we're getting close to that three number you know wow <laughs> uh judy says morning everybody georgie says morning deborah says morning safi says morning graham says morning we are still down south after unravel festival um Ooh. amber says good morning from princess curtain crusher Yay. louise says morning everybody from a cloudy derby tracy says yay finally remember to join and she says off with viv another friend tomorrow to the manor house hotel do lots of new crafts and knit and drink gin in the evening all oh, very nice Ooh. where's the manor house hotel is is that the one down south in devon that's the, not the one down south. I'm, no, gonna, I'm, so. I'm gonna that's the knitting hotel isn't it the yes. knitting retreat i've got to have a look at this where are you going tracy you've not told us where you're going oh <gasps> the manor house oh it's the one in devon it is oh my word oh um yeah and her patterns are, are fab yeah it's uh what what's she called now i don't know but it looks amazing yeah the one in devon i think is out of this world um oh god she begins with b her name begins with b what is it I've got three of her patterns Never mind. Never mind. Have I have an amazing time. Yeah, the afternoon. Barbara. No. No. Oh, well. She's got a double barreled. <sighs> and Brigitte says, I'm pleased to let you know that I could pick Rod up from hospital on Saturday afternoon. There will be more tests, so that's great news. Oh yeah. And, and um I'm sure you're looking after him like you always do yeah i'm sure you are and i'm sure he's so so happy to be home um yeah with you so that's lovely to get him home we're and, very happy and jackie says morning all morning but she is working um uh let's... right shall i shall i play music that will be absolutely lovely. And I am going to run out and move my car uh, because I'd, <laughs> there is a time of year when the the farm vehicles are even bigger than combine harvesters and they've got all things on the side and it's when they're ploughing the fields up and, um, yes, putting... Uh, they no longer put horse manure on fields um it's human stuff that they put on fields now um i know i know um isn't it interesting what you find out about <laughs> i've got no idea i just know that it's sort of, uh something to do with living in the middle of nowhere so anyway without further ado i am going to move my car because uh yeah we live on a little tiny road and it's hard for them to get past so i'll put the the um camera off for a minute while i jump outside but enjoy okay. the music for today we have about five minutes this morning well it's not that long this morning's music is an instrumental that i've been wanting to play for a very long time um and i was going to play a different version but I can't guess it. I'm going to explain why afterwards. Uh, so here we go. Enjoy. Well, that time just flew by. I thought I had a lot it longer did. left than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fab. Um, really, really lovely music. And I think, um, yeah, Brigitte loves it. Uh, Tubely Bells, Tracy reminds her of whole music, lol. Uh, Jackie says, brilliant piece of music. And Deborah says, takes me right back. Louise, brilliant music, good memories. Have to leave you now, but we'll finish on catch up. See you later, Louise. Bye, and Louise. Linda was supposed to see this performed at the Royal Festival Hall in August, but couldn't make it. Her sister went and said, and said it was amazing. Um, good morning, Linda yeah yeah for me i can't listen to that piece of music without um w without yeah, remembering the only fools and horses oh, only fools and horses yeah 
Oh, go on. Um, does anyone, if, if spoiler alert, if you want to watch it yourself, okay, I'm going to tell you. So anyway, um, Raquel says that she would like an old field number, but she means Bruce Oldfield, the designer. And then for her birthday, she gets a copy of Tubular Bells. Okay. So there's a designer. She's she wants an outfit, and Del oh. is a, a, an LP. So um, <laughs> it's funny you want to watch it. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to say it reminds you of The Exorcist because that music apparently is from The Exorcist. No, is it The Exorcist or is it Halloween? It's Exorcist. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, right. The version okay. that I downloaded originally had clips like picture stills from The Exorcist, and I was going to overlay them. And then this morning, when I went to do the overlay, my software has stopped working, and I need Gary to be able to fix it. And um he's busy on a conference call all day so i thought right i'll have to download a different version so but the reason why i wanted to play it was a, i mentioned months ago i was going to play you the two, two man tubular bells that i had from the edinburgh fringe festival which was absolutely amazing but when i watched the video you don't actually see a lot of what they're doing oh um, so i thought oh well i'll just play the original instead then <laughs> Oh, um, so I, I don't know, but uh, yeah, if you can't see it on YouTube, can't see it on YouTube, but you really enjoyed it when you went to see whoever it was. I can't remember what they were called. Um, and Jackie says, went to see it at Wembley a few years back. Fabulous. Brigitte says, have never seen The Exorcist, and I really don't want to. I love horror yeah. films. I'm just so disappointed now like back in the 80s especially when you used to go to the video shop on a saturday morning to get the rental out for that night um i think that was the time of amazing horror films and uh and and yeah i think since all of those great horror film days the only good ones that have come out really are saw uh, which I know isn't most people's taste. So, um, yeah, uh, Georgia enjoyed the music. Fabulous. And Jackie says, saw The Exorcist at the cinema and fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> um, what was the one with um, David Solin? That was in the 80s, 70s or 80s, though. Um, Salem's Lot. That was a really good one as well. Good for its time. So, uh, and Linda says you used to watch all the old Hammer horror films, but don't watch any modern ones. I know there's a bit of a change. We have um, Alan spotted something on the telly and he's downloaded a Hammer horror um, Dracula type one. So might watch it with me mum one afternoon, uh, one early evening. Um, I love the old Hammer horror. So um, nothing like, <laughs> Robert, your eyebrows went so high there. And I know. Something with subtitles or a hammer horror. What strange taste I have in, in TV and film. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right, so good morning, Linda, with a Y. I hope you're okay. Um, she joined during the music. Uh, Tracy said, uh, it's not the knitting hotel, it's the craft one that does golf as well. Oh, sorry. Uh, and <laughs> Safi said... Um, glad he's home at Brigitte and she also says farm vehicles seem to be bigger than ever this year oh thankfully it's not just me, uh man. Tracy says it's certainly smelling lush at the moment outside Angela you're lucky if you still don't have any smell I have I have some smell back Ooh. now some smell I can I get the um fainty smell of the flora now it doesn't smell like it's supposed to, but I can pick up more than one note now. Um, I still can't smell anything that I burn on the on the hob, um, but I did even. I it doesn't smell like it would normally, but I can recognise my mum's Penhaligon's fragrance, and I kept smelling it yesterday because she she'd sprayed some on her. So um, yeah, 
Um, so some of it is coming back, but thankfully, I can't really smell what's in the fields that much. I get the faintest smell, but I wouldn't know what that smell was. Um, I can only tell because my mum's face changes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's, I, I know it always smells interesting out there. Mm. Uh, Tracy says she had my only fours and horses moment at her brother's wedding reception on Saturday. One of his friends was slightly worse for wear and was sedating eating then against a door, which wasn't quite shut. And it opened and he fell through it into a cupboard. It was hilarious. His face was a classic and he looked at the door as if to say, what are you doing opening? And it reminded her of the bar <laughs> moment. Brilliant. Oh, that is funny. That is so funny. Do you know what? That is one of the best, um, best things ever. But the other one that almost stopped me breathing with laughter don't know if anyone else watches Benidorm <clears throat> or watch Benidorm, but when Madge's wedding was on the beach to that fella, I won't say what happened in case somebody hasn't watched it and chooses to go and watch it, but that episode, I think, is the funniest ever with Johnny Vegas in it as well. Um, so if you haven't seen that one of Benidorm, honestly, I, I just laughed so much. But if you it, it sort of if you like slapstick humour, you'll enjoy that one. It was absolutely hilarious. So uh, yeah. Uh, and Brigitte says loved Benidorm, saw all the episodes. Yes, I I did as well. Um, I think there's just something about it, um, and there's something about watching those bargain loving Brits on on holiday as well. Uh, sorry, in the sun. Um, because you can see all those sort of characters, can't you? All the characters who get along together and have a wonderful life. Uh, they really do. But uh, yeah, so anyway, um, quite quite amusing. Um, and Marion says, good morning. Just back from quite an eventful weekend. Ooh. Oh, quite eventful. Um, I hope everything went okay. Um, pretty do tell. I hope, I hope it was okay. Mm, I'm um, looking forward to it. Yeah, and I hope everyone's unscathed. So, um, yeah, um, do let us know. Um, and we hope that... So sit back, relax. And um, I know you're probably not really knitting yet, but maybe there's something else that you can do. Um, read a book afterwards. Um, I dropped a couple off to you. Um, so hopefully you've been able to read a little bit. Uh, it's just so annoying, isn't it, when you can't when you can't do things that you'd like to do. Um, and Marion says she survived, and some well emojis. And she says she will tell all on Wednesday if that's okay. We cannot wait. Um, I think you probably need a couple of strong cups of tea before you tell us. Okay, um, gin. Yeah, for a Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah, we need them. Oh, sorry, I'm getting any cups now. Did you? That's because I had cheese on top of my um, crumpets this morning for breakfast. Oh. Mm. Did you see the tennis on Saturday? No. no. Oh, it was no. amazing. It really was. I haven't watched tennis since Navratilova and Lendl sort of bowed out. Okay, so there was this girl who's 18 years old who yeah. dropped out of Wimbledon this year and uh, for mental health reasons and she were she was a qualifier for the US Open and she'd managed to get through to the final winning every single match in straight sets and Gary said to me all oh, quick we've got to watch the tennis I was like, why are we watching the US Open? Really not interested. But we we turned it on and she was uh, one set and four games to two up. And um, I was hooked. She was just unbelievable. Nothing phased her. She was amazing. It was great to watch. It really was. 
and she's 18 years old and she won the US Open. Oh, wow. Against a 19 year old. The first the first really? English winner since the 70s and the youngest winner since uh, Serena Williams in the late 90s. Wow. Yeah. So amazing. So it was a good match. It was, it was Brilliant. really good. And Tim Hem was there to see yeah. her. Virginia Wade was there to see her. It was just brilliant. It really was. Um, oh, and I didn't hear about it, and I thought, oh, that's really good. But it sort of happens overnight, doesn't it? You, you know, you know yeah. what I mean. But overnight, I'm in, I'm in bed by anything between eight and ten. Yeah. So um, anything that happens after eight thirty is night time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got an unraveling ball. Oh dear. That's not good. Yeah. It's fine. It's vintage. It's vintage. It's fine. It's happening. Um, and uh, Deborah says, Angela, yes, the tennis was like watching tennis back in the good old days. Really? Yeah. It, it, do you know what? I, I, I just loved watching Lendl. Uh, and he sort of knew. He got into the final so many times. And every time I sat there hoping... And uh, it never quite happened, did it? Um, and then Martine, it was just an incredible um, tennis player. Um, and it sort of like, it became, right, I'm going to say this word and you're probably not going to get it, but the whole, you, you, the whole game became, um, it, I don't know, too technical scoring it technically rather than having lots and lots of volleys or aces mm. you know it was just um yeah it, it just i don't know I lost a little bit so i'm really really glad that we you know and actually i did hear her talking on the news it must have been about i don't know silly o'clock this morning um and she just seemed as if yeah she she'd gone out to sort of buy a handbag or something it really didn't phase her at all did it she didn't get hurt like it was just oh yeah it sort of happened um so that was really good so well done to her and congratulations absolutely amazing to see a sports personality who has just gone in there done it and enjoyed it really really absolutely enjoyed it. absolutely and her prize money was 2.5 million dollars and gary went wow that's a lot of money i said yeah but that's not going to go very far by the time she's paid her team <laughs> she's likely to not get a lot out of it yeah yeah bless so, her and then yesterday was the men's final which i didn't watch but this morning caught a clip of it on the news and djokovic's behavior was just outrageous well, right. no, you know, That's in the eighties, it was all McEnroe, and you cannot be serious. That ball was in, and shouting at the umpire. Yeah, Djokovic yesterday smashing his court, his bat, his racket on the court, and I'm like, that's that, that. You know, if that was football, that would be red card, miss a match, <laughs> unpaid for a week, but he got away with it. Oh, outrageous. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it, it was always, I think Macro at the beginning was okay. And then it just got, oh, this is a bit boring now um, with, with his behaviour. Um, is is he getting towards the end of his career? I, I, I think so, yeah. So it, it's possibly, even though fabulous, getting to finals, unbelievable. But um yeah, sometimes it's quite tiring trying to stay there, isn't it? I mean, he is still ranked number one in the world and he lost to the number two. But I think he has to win <laughs> so many Opens to keep his number one rank. And I think that may be what it was, yeah. was that because he lost, he was potentially losing his number one. So, wow. But, wow. Yeah. Janice says, what a big kid. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's... I know the competitive, you have to be uber competitive 
um, to win at things like that. It doesn't just happen. You have to sacrifice so much. So we all know all of them um, are, but it's just it's just painful to watch, isn't it? When suddenly you can see those cracks coming to the forefront, which would normally just happen with their team behind the scenes. So um, yeah, let's hope he gets over it. Um, Brigitte says she doesn't like sport at all. There are too many prima donnas about who want a damn talking to how to behave. Do you know what? Yeah. Um, and there's some people who uh, you can tell they've got really good coaches who tell them exactly what to do and shut up. Just mm. do it. Like suck it up, move on. Um, next. Um, and you can see those, can't you? They've been trained really well and, and somebody is able to put a lid on them. But I do also think that people get so big in their careers that it's really hard to get somebody um, big enough and that they respect enough to be able to put them back in their place. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, absolutely amazing. Who'd have thought it? Virginia Wade and this young lady. What's she called? Emma, Emma Bredacanu. Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. So, so interesting. So, well done mm. her, who's just done it and has had her challenges in the past as well. So, um, you know, that that is amazing. So, well done to her. And good morning, Anne. Yes, good morning. She says, good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm on my second row. Can you believe it? On my second row. This is fab. Um, so, I know I keep saying it. I'll finish this one day. I will finish it one day. Don't know when I'll finish it, but I will finish it one day. Is anyone else like that at the end of projects when you know that the end is in sight? And this is the difference between one of the, these amazing tennis sports people who see the end, whereas I'm just, okay, I just need to get it finished now. Um, and, uh, yeah, whereas some people, it would really, really push them on. I tell you what, there's so much going on. I think I've just had a nearly had a bird in the house um, looking at Splodger's biscuits that she's forgotten. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm not a great sports person. You tend to watch quite a bit of sport, Robert. Is it because it just happens to be on? Um, I mean, we're not overly bothered about it. Um... No, not sports fans, but you seem to, to see quite... A bit of the important bit. Oh, you know because what I, mean? I would catch it on breakfast news. Oh, right. Okay. Um, or be or Radio Two sports update that they do every hour. Um, yeah. Oh. But yeah, that's the only reason. Oh. Um, we'll watch all the important stuff. Um, I mean, I didn't know until Gary said that we even had somebody in the final. <laughs> I'd, I'd heard it on the radio, but um, as with all these things, um, yeah, I just don't really get down to it. I watched the um, SAS program last night. Um, I must admit I'm getting rather bored with that now. It's not quite as harsh as it was before, and it is a celebrity one as well. <clears throat> um, so I watched that, but um, yeah. What else did I watch? Um, do you know, I'm trying to think what I watched over the weekend and I don't think I've watched a right lot of television at all I watched Four in a Bed on Saturday on Catch Up um, we did actually pop out yesterday to um, oh Peck's Farm Shop now Robert tell me mm -hmm. that cherry wine that you drink What's it? Who's it by? Norfolk Wines. Oh, is it? Oh, it might not be that one. Because um, we got, my mum got some cherry wine yesterday. It was really, really oh, was nice. was it? <laughs> yeah, there's half a bottle left here, so you can have a little taste later when, when we meet up if you want. It's very cherry. It's more like pop than oh, wine. Good. So it's even something that I could drink, if you know what I mean, because <laughs> I don't drink wine. I drink champagne. I drink Prosecco. I don't drink wine. I just, uh, I've just gone off the taste so much. Um, but yeah, even I could drink that. Um, but it's very, very nice. Very easy drinking. So, and here we go. Here is, 
it will eventually get finished. My mum will really, really love this as well because uh, it is her favourite colour. Um, it's just what I do next. I've got so many different bits of wool. I got that beautiful stuff from the um, the um, sale that was to raise money for Alzheimer's in Marion's garden. And I've got some pink and some purple beautiful stuff there. Then I've got, yes, it is in my possession. So I'm, I am having it. I'm having Angela's, what is it, Sparkled? Angela's Choice Sparkled. Yep. That's there. So that's 800 metres. Um, and I would really, really like to use that as well. Um, so what do I make out of it? I really don't know. Um, and then, do you know what? I saw this. It's like a bit of a T-shirt that you put over vesty type things that looks really nice. Then I've got that finesse as well with my, um, what is it, um, top that I'm wanting to do. Um, so it's just, what do I do next? Because hopefully by Wednesday, I'll be on to something new. Um, so I think, Brigitte, you said that the finesse was beautiful to knit with. Um, and I do have the noir. And I think there's maybe a few balls left of the noir that I might have to purchase. I'll purchase them. Don't worry, Robert. We haven't got any left. <laughs> Who missed that? We haven't you got are. any left. You had all of it. I oh, think did I? so. We definitely haven't got any more left. So whether somebody else bought right, something okay. and had what was left. I probably did. I had a, I had a gift. I was just making sure. I've, I've got enough for what I want. But, you know, when you just think there's bags and things like that, that you can do with it as well. So, um, hey-ho. Um, but, yeah, I might, I might do that because it, it's just so lovely, isn't it? Um, and you know me. I'm not the greatest. Um, I want to do something back on normal long needles like this is fine and i love the chow goose but i i just really 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 miss knitting on my long needles i really oh, apparently do. we do have some left have we i don't remember seeing it but apparently we have <laughs> there's just so much here i couldn't you know it's impossible to keep track of don't need it now don't need it at the moment really don't <laughs> Right, should we do Facebook? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me open up the page. There we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so I posted something yesterday. What is something you have low tolerance for? Um, mine is rude customers. I'm always getting feedback about how I need to be better controlling with rude customers. And I just think if they're rude to me, I'm going to be rude to them. Um, but there we go. Uh, <laughs> we've got lots in here. What did everyone else yeah, say? We've got lots in here. So uh, Tracy says people that lie. Uh, Georgie says rude and dishonest people. Uh, Jane says bad manners. Oh, yes, I hate that as well. Uh, Jean says being taken for granted. Uh, Safi says people who make out uh, or really stupid things to be cool. Uh, Dawn says tangled yarn. And Brigitte says, Dawn, just give it to Robert. Yep, definitely. Um, <laughs> Linda says bad manners and littering. Uh, Marion says, people who think they are better than you, people who let doors swing back in your face, generally speaking, bad manners. Yep. Uh, yeah. Rowena says, with you on rude, when I say hello or greet someone, you expect them to answer, just plain ignorant. Um, Claire says, people assuming I'm psychic. Uh, Brigitte says, been said before, bad manners and littering. Uh, Janice says, cyclists who think they're entitled to ride on the pavement. Um, and then she goes on to say cyclists who are actually on the road, but decide red traffic signals don't count for them and ride at you while you are quite legally walking across the zebra crossing. Yep. Yeah. Um, Linda says uh, people who assume that I'm dim because I'm quiet. Oh, 
Uh, and then Jackie says, all of the above and runners who can't be bothered to say thank you when you move out of the way for them. When I'm out running and someone moves out of the way, I always say thank you. And don't get me started on cyclists and some walkers who think they own the pavement along with their flipping dogs. I could go on. <laughs> and mine was a P word. Yours was a what? A, a mine was a P word, so I didn't put it on there. It's what we don't talk about. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 um dawn just spotted this on etsy so cute it's a cat felt craft kit uh mrs cat loves knitting uh so that might be worth a look if that's your thing that is beautiful um, absolutely beautiful amber's posted slowly the spindle is turning she's on her second spindle fall oh well done. Isn't it an, an incredible colour? Well done, Amber. It's amazing what you're doing with that uh, raw wool, making something that looks like spun amber. <laughs> Hence the name, Amber. Uh, Sarah has posted um, a meme, uh, which is quite funny, uh, which is um, the Grim Reaper saying, you don't want to die with unfinished business. You'll be doomed to walk the earth as a ghost. Let me be clear, leave nothing unfinished. And then there's a picture of knitters, weavers, quilters, spinners, crocheters, all panicking. Because we've all got lots of unfinished business. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is quite a good one. Um, any questions asked, uh, this is posted by Georgie. Any questions asked while I'm crocheting, while I'm counting crochet stitches will be answered with louder counting. Um, and then uh, the comments on this one. Pat says, uh, now isn't that true? Sally says, give a loud huff and a louder one, two. Uh, Linda says, it's worse when it's snooker or darts on the telly. Try counting then. Uh, Kathy says, me too. Rebecca says, very true in my case. And then I go on, because obviously I'm controversial, and say, the rebel in me always counts louder and in the wrong order when someone is counting just to make them laugh. It's got a 50-50 success rate. <laughs> um, and then um, Rebecca says her granddad used to do the same. Um, oh, this is gorgeous. Have you seen this this morning? Mm. I had a quick look. I thought, oh, that's rather this nice. Is that's very been nice. shared by Georgie. This is uh, from Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. Looking for a little Noro inspiration. Uh, join me today at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live. Uh, Noro Yarns, Knitting Fever and Euro Yarns. Now, there's a couple of interesting things here. Love this Noro. This is gorgeous. Uh, I think this is like a mitered effect. Um, yeah. That's, caught, that's created this panel here. Um, and I think you do the sleeves in this top panel because I can't quite see a join. Oh, you, no, there is because it goes the opposite way, doesn't it? Okay, so that's that's my mistake. Not quite sure what this top is, but it's gorgeous. And then I spy in the background. Did you see this? Looks like ours, the doesn't it? rainbow. So that that was really interesting, but I don't think that's what she's used on the top, or maybe it is. I don't know. But I really don't know. Looks lovely. So love, love, love Beautiful. that. Yeah. Um, Deborah has. Uh, I think we saw this the other day. Uh, Brigitte, Brigitte has uh, commented on it though because she loves cross stitch. This we saw the other day. I think, yep, yeah, I think we're all caught up. Oh, and to finish with the fog. Uh, I'm sure it's finished now. Uh, we will have to ask. Uh, Brigitte says, when I'm in the car and a cyclist races across the pedestrian crosses and crossing and rages at me for not wanting to stop. <laughs> but as they're doing 40 miles an hour, um, how are you to know that they're going to go across the um, the pedestrian crossing? Because why would a cyclist go across a pedestrian crossing, if you know yeah. what I mean? They should be turning left and right on the roads. Uh, so, yes. So, so many people. It's so much easier, isn't it, when you're on lockdown, stay in your home, not leave the house, because then you don't get annoyed with other people like cyclists and stuff. <laughs> Hmm. 
Oh, and I'm just finishing my cup of tea, which is very cool now, but never mind. It's fine. So I'm actually on my third row um, since we've been on air, which is quite good, isn't it? Oh. And that, um, I'd be really interested to know what yarn they've used for um, for that. Um, do you know what? I'm just going to check something. Um because I keep looking. Yeah, and if there's something that I'm still really struggling with, um, I do have some Geshi um, Noro, um, and it's very cottony, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I'm still struggling to find the right pattern for it. So every time I try and create a pattern, um, or use it for a pattern, it's just like, you know, it's not quite working because it's quite stiff. It's got quite a lot of structure in it. So, um, yeah, normally Noro is so um, lovely and bouncy and soft and, and just beautiful. It like falls around the body, but Geshe is slightly different. So I'm still trying to find the, the perfect pattern for Geshe. Um, I'm just so glad I didn't buy loads and loads and loads of balls of it. It's lovely colours, absolutely beautiful colours. Um, and I don't want to make a bag out of it. So if anyone has any inspiration, please let me know. Um, and Br Brigitte has just said, exactly, Angela. She had a cyclist come towards me on a very narrow pavement and would stop, wouldn't stop until the wheel nearly touched me and shouted at me, get out of my way. <gasps> you you something i was not very polite with my reply no i'm so i'm not surprised that you weren't and brigitte i do remember being outside your house and delivering a parcel i think to you and i nearly got run over by a cyclist when i stood talking to you and then just turned around to walk to my car and suddenly i nearly had my head and my foot taken off by a cyclist um they just feel as if they own the road. And I can say that because I am a cyclist. So I do cycle, but I do stay on the road. I don't go on the um, the pavement. And I think Leighton Buzzard is really um, deceptive because a lot of the cycle routes are actually on the wide pavements. So it's sort of telling cyclists you're okay to cycle on these pavements um but they're but then they do it blinking everywhere um so i do have a little bit of an issue with um they should be on the roads um and Anne says she has friends who are farmers and they are doing work in the fields crossing the country road at the main entrance to the farm a group of cyclists came along and complained about the mud on the road caused by several journeys in the tractor they normally clean up the road uh, when the day's work is finished tell them to just use their handlebars to go around it um in a in a not so polite way i would say and uh, marion says don't start me on mobility scooters and e-scooters i know i know um what is the world coming to we have roads we have pavements there was a time when pavements were for people walking and now a pavement is for people walking it's for mo mobility it's for these scooters and don't get, don't even start me on parents who have child who decides to to take contraption out and then decides I can't be bothered with that anymore and parent is swinging blinking thing that nearly cracks your mm -hmm. knee don't even start on that as well so um yeah I just think do you know what if you're taking your bike out or if you're taking your scooter out if you don't like it anymore you should be forced to wheel the blinking thing so next time you decide to leave it at home um so i just think it comes back to do you know what when we talked about some um sports people <laughs> like we just need to be fair losers don't we if you take your bike out and you think i can't bother to cycle it you've got to push the blinking thing home and then next time you think twice about it um so i think yeah what is it it's called um i'll be politically correct here it's called personing up <laughs> 
Dear, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, fab. Right, I am going to finish this last row. Got to do seven of these, and I've done, I think I've done four. One, two, three, four. I think this might be my fifth one. That's good. Is it warm in there, Robert? Uh, it is, yeah. Um, but I'm just, um, I'm just moving around so I can get ready to come to you. Uh, we've got we've got um, a telephone meeting at quarter past eleven, and I, I just thought <laughs> Tracy's saying, "Don't jump, Robert! Don't jump!" <laughs> well, couldn't if I wanted to. It's not that far down either. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're like me i do remember being a when i was a child i went climbing a tree over the bottom of my parents um uh, like garden you know all these bits of land used to be just scrub land didn't it with trees in and stuff there are now two houses on this land but um i went um climbing trees and fell out the tree but I didn't fall to the ground because it had an Aaron jumper on and a branch got stuck at the back of the the um, thing on my neck. So I was swinging by the by my neck. And the thing was, I couldn't get out. And I was screaming, dad, mom, dad, mom, forever. And eventually my dad had to jump over the wall, come and like unhook me. <laughs> so I'm only saying that because I, I jumped thinking, oh, this will be interesting to jump out this tree. Didn't reach the ground, did I? I was swinging forever. So, uh, yeah. Well, we've had a nice tour and we can see exactly how many soft toys you've got, which is lovely. You're on quiet. I know, I know. <laughs> Jackie has got to go. See you Wednesday. Bye, See you on Wednesday, Jackie. Happy running, wherever you're running. Oh, and there's Nomi. Which is fab. In his new home. Her new home. <gasps> oh, wow. Nomi looks... Gnoma eh, looks lovely. I know it's Nomi. Um, I keep... Because um, it's a double sequin hat, so you can flip it to, for different colours. I keep... Um, Keep putting yeah. messages on it for Gary, and he hasn't twigged yet. <laughs> writing stuff on it, and he hasn't twigged. <laughs> oh, this is so, that's 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 like the whole clean me yes. on the back of a van, isn't it? Very much so. <laughs> oh dear, bless. Yeah. Oh, that's so that's so funny. Um, yeah, but I I am. Um, I do, I do. Oh, do you know what I did yesterday? Um, we, I think I mentioned on one of the shows that we've got um, in our little WhatsApp group, lots of people saying, oh, do you want any such and such? And and I got loads and loads and loads of damsons yesterday. So I made damson jam, but my jam isn't very firm. It never is because I'm always scared to boil it. So um, for ages and ages. So I do have, I would say it's more of a preserve. Um, but yeah. Um, damsons and I've I've made um, a pavlova and I need some ice cream and then I thought uh, and a little bit of chocolate which we've got some um, lovely is it tasse or tasse chocolate uh, so I was thinking I could make a little bit of uh, an Ledburn mess oh. not an eaten mess a Ledburn mess so I think yes yeah, so I think we could make something like that so I'll have to go out and grab some ice cream later. I've got some cream as well. I can put some cream in. So, um, yeah, and put in some um, raw, what do you call it, um, some of those little damsons because they are so sweet. They're amazing, really beautiful. So I've got those and chilies and tomatoes and all sorts from neighbours, which is brilliant. So I will have to bake more and gift them some cake. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I, that was quite a nice industrious afternoon making um, dams and jam, which was great. Um, I don't think I've, done, I've got some apples left. I've got chilies left. Um, I've got some of those Spanish funny peppers, 
that are quite, can be quite hot. The chilies, little peppers, green ones that you you bake and then eat, and every so often there's some hot ones. But some of those left as well. So yeah, it's really quite good having all these lovely organic um, veggies, which is brilliant. Yeah, really, really like them. So. <sighs> And I'm still sat here thinking, do you know what? Do I try making a pair of socks? Should my next project be a exactly pair of socks? I don't know. Mm. Really? Because I am, like, I've never made socks. And everybody says once you get mm. into it, it's really quite amazing. Um, so I think I need to mm. do a simple set of socks, first of all. And then go from there. But I am thinking um, it would be really nice to try socks. Oh, hello, gorgeous. Hello. Well, gorgeous one and two. Tofi, I heard that. Hello. What? He says, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they are so gorgeous, aren't they? Yeah, relatively. Have they been good boys? Although, although he was ill again yesterday. Oh, that's... come on. Oh. Uh, right, I'm. No. Gonna, I'm going to say goodbye because I need to ah. get to you. Yeah. See you soon, okay, Robert. Okay. I will put the kettle bye, on when I finish. Don't worry. Um, and so bye, uh, everybody. I'll see you Wednesday. Sorry. See you then, Robert. See you soon. <clears throat> so in terms of socks, uh, Brigitte says, follow my sock pattern, Angela. It's very simple. I may just do that. Thank you very much, Bro um, Brigitte. And Deborah says, go for the socks, Angela. I recommend Winnick Mum's free tutorials. Look her up. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a picture of that. Um, I so I know them. Um, and Safi says socks are so boring. Uh, do you know what? I, I I just want to see what it's like to make a pair of socks. I really do. Um, and I know that I've got all this beautiful, beautiful sock yarn that I then make other creations in. Um, and I do know there's nothing quite as toasty in the winter. And, and may I just add, I haven't seen our new floor in I don't know how long because it's covered in blue plastic because it's getting replastered in there. But once it's plastered in the next few weeks, putting a fire on and having some lovely toasty socks on. Brigitte, thank you very much for my socks. Um, that's what I'd quite like to do. So I may have a go at doing some um, socks. And I did put a pattern of Noro socks on. They're free. The, sorry, no, the pattern is free on our website on gogglefrogs.co.uk. Uh, and it's a Noro sock pattern. That's all old patterns. So that would not be the first one that I'd do because I'm a total beginner when it comes to socks. But I'll have a go at some point. Um, Amber says, um, thank you for a wonderful start to the week. Thank you for joining us, you and P Princess Curtain Crusher. Happy crafting. Make the socks and enjoy the process. It's one of those things, isn't it? Um, and Safi says, I say that. I'm just finishing off a pair in watermelon colourway. Ha, ha, ha. Um, Marion says, see you on Wednesday. Um, Deborah says, socks are just so portable. Yeah, I, I do remember when I first started knitting, there was a lady, a Scottish, she had a Scottish um, accent and she used to go to nutmegs when that was there. And that's all she did. She she just knitted socks, loads and loads and loads of different socks. She loved them. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to go and have a go at socks, I think. They are very portable and they only take up a little, you know, you can put them in a little um, pencil case, really, can't you? Um, and Safi says, maybe not boring, but they just don't do it for her. But she does make socks. She's doing some at the moment. Uh, we all have our lovely things that we really enjoy doing. I think mine's cardigans, but every time I make a cardigan, I just... Mm, 
just take it all out, don't I? Um, and Deborah says, thank you so much. See you on Wednesday. Or oh, yes, do get your um, drinky poos ready for Wednesday evening and uh, be ready to see. Hopefully I'll have finished this. So hopefully I'll have something else on the needles. Will it be socks? Will it be something else? If it is socks, I think I don't think I'll be able to do them online. Not unless I buy some of those tiny, tiny, tiny little chow goos that are perfect for socks. So without further ado, it is now 11 o'clock. So I will say goodbye and I will see you 8 p.m. Um, and that's, are we still in British Standard Time? We are, aren't we, until October. Um, so we will see you at 8 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Sending love to you and your loved ones and um, happy crafting. See you later. Bye.